afternoon good day and welcome to lakshmi organic for industry this call is now being recorded you one fy24 conference call hosted by go india advisors as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen no name mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touch tone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to ms kruti patel from go india advisors thank you and over to you kruti thank you zico good evening everyone and welcome to the quarter 1 fy24 earnings call of lakshmi organic industries limited we have on the call mr ravi goenka chairman dr rajin venkatesh md and ceo mr harshvardhan goenka executive director and ms tanushree bagrodia chief financial officer we must remind you that the discussion on today's call may include certain forward looking statements and must be therefore viewed in conjunction with the risks that the company faces may i now request mr ravi goenka to start the call subsequent to which we will open the floor for q and a thank you and over to you sir uh, thanks very much kruti and a very warm welcome to all of you our dear investors esteemed colleagues and partners i sincerely appreciate your time interest and unwavering trust in our journey we recently welcomed dr rajan venkatesh as our new managing director and ceo dr rajan comes with nearly two decades of global experience having led bsf across functions with the last few years leading a billion dollar business i am excited truly excited to take to see him take our company towards the next phase of our growth it's no secret today that globally we find ourselves in challenging times post covid the world has moved from a just in case to a just in time buying pattern therefore these talking of supply chains are impacting the chemical industry tremendously to top that the recession in europe isn't helping but india remains extremely well positioned and i am certain that it will grow exponentially this decade it seems to be the only silver lining in an otherwise cloudy atmosphere globally while our company is fully prepared to face the current headwinds we have many growth enablers that will propel us forward and i am excited to see our company pivot to our new trajectory under the able leadership of rajan over to you rajan thank you ravi and uh, namaskaram from my side this has been a greeting i have been wanting to use for many years i'm glad i'm back home and using that so today what i would like to take you through is i would say two distinct pillars one is after four months in lakshmi my reflections of what has made lakshmi successful and second is we have also laid out our ambition on our way forward so those would be the two key buckets so let me start by my reflection of what i believe has made lakshmi successful in the past first when i engage with the team when i engage with our customers when i engage with our board members and when i engage with our stakeholders the one thing that stands out is lakshmi as a team is exceedingly agile there is a strong willingness to learn and there is a strong eagerness to win the other element is our customer base and our customer base is exceedingly diversified and a lot of our actions are customer led a lot of the investments have been customer focused so here i am also wanting to in the next step take you through the presentation that we uploaded and so that's what my first who we are uh, reflection what we have also done with the team is really look across our performance and for those who are following this is slide number 4 over a business cycle and we have used the asset asset price as a reference 
over from financial zero eight to the current point in time. Few key reflections here. Lakshmi has always been prudent in the capex and investments and acquisitions because we have landed doing that always in the down cycle. Be it the acquisitions of the Clarion business, be it the Daikitin capacity expansions which we did, be it the YCPL acquisitions to augment our ETA capacity, or even the acquisition of Mittany from Italy, which today follows forms the bulk of our fluorine intermediates. Even our IPO, which happened, actually happened in the down cycle. So that's a very, very important reflection. Second one is if you really see through the cycle, so we have split it into three between financial year 11 to 16, 16 to 21, and 21 to 23 are very distinct business cycles. Again, links to the acetic asset price, and we have also indicated some macro events like the financial crisis, oil crash, COVID impact, economic slowdown, what Ravi alluded to currently. In all of this, what stands out for me is our return on capital employed. It's on an average is about 20%. In the financial year 16 to 21, it's about 22, that was our highest. And in the financial year 21 to 23 is about 18%. But my one disclaimer there is the fact that this includes our capex for the future. It includes the capex we have done for Lote. It includes the Dahe land acquisition that we made. You, including that, if you take that into perspective, that's about a 200 basis points. So you would be looking at a roughly about 20% if you were to take that out, but we thought in sake of transparency, we make it very, very transparent. The other one is we have consistently deleveraged our balance sheet. Looking from an average debt to equity of 1.06, where we stand today is 0.12. And I think all of these are testimony to the performance of Lakshmi and will also set the basis of how we will steer moving ahead. Then moving on to slide five is why I believe we are geared to win. On the left-hand side, we have attributed our, I would say, key DNA topics. Our global leadership in a range of products, the cost leadership across technologies that we are engaging in, the large scale flexible and safe operations that we have managed, the multiple sites for expansion and business continuity, and I will reflect on this in the course of the presentation, focusing on Lote and the age, our well diversified customer industry, which I alluded to, solid balance sheet, low leverage and strong cash flow from existing businesses, which have been referred to in the previous calls, an experienced leadership team and an independent eminent board, and trusted partners to our customers. So those, I would say, I hope are music to everybody's ears and certainly to my ears as I come into Lakshmi. Our ambition is fourfold. One is to continue to be in the top five in the segments globally. Let me give some color to it. In the Daikitin, Kitin, Daikitin space, we are today top five. With our investment roadmap, we will be top three. In our acetals business, and specifically if you talk about the ethyl acetate, we are outside of the top five today as we speak. We are very, very strong outside. Uh, if you carve out China, we are again very, very strong. As a supplier to the market, our aspiration is to be global top five. If you then, the other second topic is continue to have leading cost positions. That is our right to win for any business, and that has been our right to win in the past will continue to be the right to win in the future. The third element is to balance our exports and domestic sales and find uh, the healthy balance there. Uh, in the past, we have had exports in the range of 30 to 40 percent. Uh, with the global, global supply chains all looking into India, I think we have a great opportunity to leverage also on the export story. And last but not the least is the continued trusted partner of choice for our customers. What, in part of our ambition, what we are also leveraging is what we've always oft heard is the shifting of the supply chains. I am coming with this experience, as Ravi said, of leading a business across Asia Pacific, including China. I've had the opportunity to lead global businesses. And post COVID, 
certainly the narrative and the actions that we see from stakeholders and customers is very very strong they they are looking at business continuity as a top priority and wanting to set up a more diversified global footprint and here india i remain convinced as a unique position to play and lakshmi therein also has a unique position to play we also see a growing end product markets for the industries that we serve both in india and outside so that's our ambition fourfold and leveraging on both the macro and the micro trends now what we have also approached is really looking at our business while you know what where we have really strengthened our portfolio when you think about it from chemistries looking at our production capabilities then going into platforms and then customers and that we have done because as lakshmi we have always bought in technology be it the diketin ketin which i alluded to or the mitanese fluorine chemistry that has been our strength so over the past that has been our proven success and that has broadened our platform to leverage both on assets and capabilities now what we did is we basically also took an outside in approach when we spoke to our customers what we realized is in the ai asset all space what customers are seeking for most is price competitive pricing and what they are seeking for is that the product is delivered in spec in time and with good quality while in our specialty intermediates and also fluorine intermediate business the need and ask from our customers are more on the innovation side and needless to say also priority quality and in time pricing while important is not the most important decision point so when by looking at that we have also now decided to pivot build on our strengths and given our breadth in portfolio and land we want to really start even more from the customer interface bring in the requests look at our platforms then build up the capability and then bring up the product and serve our customers so that's a very distinct approach we have taken a proven success and pivoting from that building on the customer interface what we have done now i'm on slide number 7 if you are keeping track what we have also done is really looked at customer interaction models and there are about six distinct customer interaction models uh, that are i would say off discussed in the space on one end of the spectrum is a very very commoditized trader transactional and on the other end of the spectrum is something called value chain integrator where customers come to you and we jointly put put the assets and make music and money together and when we really map this out across our offerings of acetal intermediate specialty and fluorine what really stands out is the following the acetal intermediate is in the lean and reliable basic supplier space while our specialty and fluorine intermediates are in the space of standard package product process innovator customized solution provider and we are seeing more and more an ask for value chain integrator so what we have done is really move forward with two distinct business units the first one we call essentials this encompasses our acetal intermediates and we have also included the anhydrides business which was part of our erstwhile si portfolio in this this is a lean and reliable supplier customer interaction model a very large global addressable market in excess of 12 billion and the assets to win here are economy of scale and cost leadership on the specialty space we have decided to steer both and merge the fluorine and specialty intermediates under one bucket this is because we want to leverage scale and we want to leverage i would say the interfacing with our customers so let me give you a very tangible example when we speak to our customers in the pharma domain or agro domain they are already buying diketin based chemistries from us they will buy fluorine based chemistries they are also buying the acetal based chemistries from us so we are having distinct conversation with the same customers so in the specialty space we decided to decided to steer this under one bucket this will provide us world called technology platforms a large addressable market in excess of 
$3.5 billion. And clearly, innovation continues to be a lever for profitable growth. Look at slide number eight. Again, this summarizes, A, again, the essentials and specialities on the technology platform. In the essentials, we have the esterification and acetylation. And on the specialties, we have the ketene, diketene, fluorination, and we have put new platforms because we are seeing exceedingly good interest from multiple customers to come in, and I'll share an example thereafter in the presentation, to really augment uh, and really partner with us with new technologies and platforms. And this will be all in the speciality space. In the bottom part is, you know, the first thing is the steering on essentials and specialities. And needless to say, I'm assuming the question in your mind is, what does that mean in our targeted financial KPIs? And in our KPIs, we are, again, very, very clear in the ambition for the essential space, our asset turns should be in the range of 3 to 5, EBITDA margins in the 8 to 12 percent levels, and for the specialities, the asset turns in the 1 to 2 range, and EBITDA margins in the 20 to 25 percent range, and which then provides a combined ROC at a Lakshmi Enterprise level of 20 percent. So we see the music in both these verticals, essentials and specialities, enabling us as Lakshmi to continue to deliver 20% ROSI, as we have done in the past, also in the future. Ravi alluded to growth enablers, and I will speak about three distinct growth enablers. The first one is the growth enablation of innovation. As a chemist by myself, obviously I have a slight bias towards this, but I believe a positive bias. What we see here at Lakshmi is we have invested upward of 2% of our specialty revenues on innovation. And as our revenues in specialties will continue to increase, we are committed to invest 2% of that in innovation and R&D. What we are also will continue to strive towards is achieve 20% of our revenues from new products in specialties that have been launched in the last five years. Today, as we speak in our specialty intermediates portfolio, 25% of our revenue is coming from products that have been launched in the last five years. In our innovation pipeline, we have 11 products that are in pilot and capex approval stage. The Mitany infrastructure and pilot assets is a huge plus for us, and, and we will leverage that. And I'm exceedingly proud to announce that the new innovation campus, uh, which will start up in Mahape, will be up and running by March of 2024. The second growth enabler is our manufacturing sites. As I would say, for the software, this is our hardware. The hardware here, we, as you all know, we have Mahat two sites, a land parcel of 45 acres, land occupancy of 90%, product mix, essentials, and specialties is 60-40. Lote, our, I would say, a baby that is growing up with some growing up pains, but land parcel of 30 acres. And as we complete our phase one capex for Lote, the land occupancy will be 50% and a mix of primarily specialities. And the H, which is a baby which is just born, and we are looking forward to build this up strong, a land parcel of 86 acres. Uh, and you will hear our plans for the H and with a product mix of specialty to essential 65 to 35. If I reflect both the H and Lote's, will be scalable brownfield sites, which will enable us growth in the future. The third enabler is the element of our networks and alliances. And what do I imply by that? We have an exceedingly, we are blessed, as Ravi always says, to have an exceedingly great board of directors. And I'm not reading all the names here. These people come who the who's who in both in the chemical space, come with deep innovation experience, Mr. Manish Shaukani is a very well-known figure in the circles, Mr. Bundelu, Sangeeta. So this is a network we have at a board level. And needless to say, my management team is also coming with a very, very strong mix of experience and execution. I want to also play something here, which I heard last time, and I want to share this very transparently. The average tenure in my management team as we execute on these plans is five years minimum. We have our heads of manufacturing, our heads of R&D, who have been upward of five years. We have the business heads who are in the range of five years. 
In fact, Tanushree and me, in some ways, are new kids on the block to Lakshmi. I also believe, so those are the three enablers. I also believe for any organization to achieve its ambition is the value system. And in Lakshmi, we have four distinct values we will leverage on. Integrity, innovation, customer centricity, and sustainability. I think I have given little more color on those and will not go through that in detail, but these will be the things we will live on to achieve and deliver on our ambition. Now on slide number 13, which is talking about the business update for the site at Lote, the cost to complete as it stands is 550 crores. And this we have got full clarity because we have opened up all the containers, we have done the health checkup of all the equipment that has reached our shores and there is nothing there in Italy at this point of time. So 550 is the hardwired number that we know we will commit and that will give us all elements of EHS that we can run this site in the future and also provide the right platform. The project has had delays, has had cost overruns. Uh, there are various reasons, the COVID restrictions, the trade costs, but we now remain exceedingly confident in what we are establishing in Lote. We are in fact on the infrastructure and utilities also geared up for future expansion. And like I said, 50% of the land is available for expansion. Timelines, financial year this year is complete commissioning and sampling. Financial year 25 is ramp up of production. I hope you'll also be excited to hear the first wins. We have successfully established quality on norms of our first products. We have quali qualification quantities of a new agro intermediate supplied to an innovator company for their product launch in 2026. And we have signed with an MNC to add more technology beyond Mitini with a buyback supply agreement, which I believe this is just the tip of the iceberg, as they say, there is more to come. Show abhi baki hai. When we talk about the Dahej, also superb excited to share that the board has approved uh, the largest investment that Lakshmi has put on the ground of 710 crores over the next three years. Uh, what are we leveraging here? Again, let me repeat myself. Shifting of the supply chain, China plus one, growing end products and market and growth of the Indian market. This is India's decade, as Ravi said, I am 100% convinced about that. The onus of responsibility is on us. Of the 710 crores, we plan to cover about 20% of the land parcel of 86 acres. This is also very strongly driven by customer requests, customer growth, and business continuity from what our customers seek. I'm also thrilled to share, we already have the first customer-led project signed for the H. We will leverage economies of scale, both on the make and the buy side. And our product portfolio will encompass the specialities, diketin and ketin derivatives, and essentials, esters, anhydrides, and aldehyde derivatives. So before I hand it over to Tanishri on the quarter one, let me just take away, summarize. We are geared to win, ladies and gentlemen, we have the ingredients in place of know-how, connection, facilities, space, and management. We have always invested at the cyclic bottom. That's exactly what we are doing. We will have differentiated steering and differentiated KPIs for the business units. And we are committed to continue making 20% ROSI across the business cycle. With that, I will pass it over to Tanishri. Just a few words before. Quarter one is what she would share. Uh, you will hear the quarter one's performance, also linking to what you heard from Ravi. Obviously, the markets are a bit cloudy. Uh, it, it's a mystery out there. But as they also say, in every challenge remains an opportunity. And that is what I believe that we should tap into. While quarter one numbers are panned out, quarter two looks a little more challenging where we are having customers also seeking us, uh, postponing some of our deliveries. But we are also hearing from customers that the demand has not vanished. It's more a calibration year. With that, I hand it over to Tanushri. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before we discuss the financial numbers, I think it's important to shed some light on how our volumes have performed. Um, overall, as a company and for the business unit, because at the end of the day, it is the volumes that result into the financial performance of the company. At a company level, the absolute volume sold 
increased 5% quarter on quarter and 9% year on year. Within each of the BUs as well, which is essentials and specialties, the sales volumes increased. In essentials, the quarter on quarter sales volumes grew in line with the company at 5% quarter on quarter and 9% year on year. In specialties, the quarter on quarter sales volumes grew by 6% while the year-on-year -year sales volumes grew by 15%. The year-on-year -year growth in specialties comes on the back of the capitalization that were completed in the last fiscal. Looking at the financial performance, the increase in volumes ensured that year-on-year -year, the top line remained intact. Q1 FY24 consolidated revenue of Rs. 737.5 crores was only 3% lower than that of Q1 FY23. While versus the immediately preceding quarter of Q4 FY24, the consolidated revenue was flat. At an EBITDA level, the consolidated EBITDA of Rs. 81.3 crores was 21% lower than quarter one of FY23 which is primarily driven by the changes in inventory. In Q1 FY23, the inventory increased by 48 crores roughly, 47.5 crores to be precise, while in Q1 FY24, the inventory reduced by 12.8 crores. Other expenses have come down by 15% year on year. On a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, the EBITDA was 26% higher, largely driven by the lower expenses that you can see on the other expenses, and at once again, the lower change in inventories. Driven by the EBITDA and the higher depreciation, profit after tax at the company level was Rs. 38.3 crores, which is 41% lower on a year-on-year -year basis. But on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, it was almost 60% higher. If we look at the business unit levels, the revenue contribution of essentials is at 67% of the company, which is comparable at 65% for the full year of FY23. These numbers are realigned to factor in the new business unit where the essentials business unit now factors in the anhydrides in addition to the previous products. The specialties BU contributed 33% of the overall company revenue, which is once again similar to the full year of FY23. On the EBITDA front, specialties continues to be close to 70% contributor to the overall company EBITDA, while essential continues to be around 30%. With the capacity addition and changing product mix, the contribution margin percentage for specialties grew 18% in Q1 FY24 versus full year FY23, like for like. The consolidated cash flow from operations for Q1 FY24 was at 172 crores versus rupees 250 crores for the full year of FY23. This is a significant improvement overall for the company, and along with the low leverage of 0.2x, it further strengthens the financial position of the company. With this, I would like to hand back the call to Mr. Ravi Goenka. Uh, uh, thank you for your patience hearing, and uh, happy to take this forward onto the Q&A session and uh, answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Amar Moria from Alpha Accurate Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead with your question. Uh, Mr. Amar, may we request you to use the answer as you are not audible? Hello? 
Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. So, first question is, uh, did I hear correctly? Volume growth on year-over-year -year basis is something uh, nine percent for essential and fifteen percent for specialty, right? Yes. Uh, it's yeah. Okay. So, what would be the utilization for both these views? So, our essential view always runs at the maximum possible utilization. Okay. And as far as the specialty goes, like I said, the 15% year-on-year volume growth also comes from the fact that we had two large capitalizations that came in FY23. Correct. Correct. So what would be the utilization now for the overall view, specialty? So, Amar, just to, just to give it more color, right? Yeah. The essentials vertical, like in most businesses, is a continuous process. So you run it at high utilizations. Correct. So as, as uh, Tanushree explained, so I must say, sorry, Rajan here first, so that you're hearing my voice maybe for the first time here. Uh, so again, Essentials focus is really economy of scale, leveraging the economy of scale. While in the specialty vertical, these are batch processes and multi-step plants and reaction. So utilization is not the necessary tipping point. It is the complexity that you are steering through those assets. Correct. Correct. And the Dahej investment is really triggered because we are at a cusp where there is a lot more dil mange more from customers. And today we are at a point that we are not able to service all the needs. Correct. Correct. So why I was asking, like, you know, um, what I understand is that the last two KPEX which we had done, was largely more of a backward integration and you know which were likely to add more to the profitability and less to the margin so that is why i was asking like you know what would be the utilization in that context so harsh will jump into the last two capex since you asked that <laughs> i am at harsh here uh, so so the, the utilizations are remain fairly good for the new assets as well uh, but uh, but yeah, the overall specialty concept of, of utilization, I think, is fair, is well shared. Okay. And lastly, sir, uh, was there any fluorine specialty FI revenue in this quarter booked? No. Okay. Okay. So basically, the commissioning will start by let's say fourth quarter, or it will everything will come in FY25. So, Amar, as we have stated, commissioning has start, has already happened. We have got the first products on spec. This year we'll go in doing the same for all our initial phase of products. And the sampling of that will also happen within this year. Large revenues and ramp up will actually get delivered to the PNL next year. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Ankur Parival from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, thanks, Dr. Rajan, for your, uh, you know, for oversight in terms, uh, insight in terms of, you know, uh, how the business is going to pan across the two verticals. Uh, I'm just trying to, you know, delve into into those thoughts. Uh, so, from an RM inflation perspective, you know, overall we had the, the AI and SI business wherein, you know, AI was more uh, immediate RM pass through. And we were making typical, you know, margins uh, at the commodities margins there. How should one look at, you know, both specialty and essentials from an R and inflation perspective, uh, pass through perspective, and let's say a short term, long term contract? How, how do we work now? Good. Thanks. Thanks for the question. I think uh, you sort of hit the hammer on the nail. So obviously the essentials part, and that's why when we were sharing in slide number. Four, uh, really over the business cycle is what you see as acetic acid as a base and what our performance has been. So let's dwell a little more details into that, right? Prior to the financial year 16, what you really saw was a stronger contribution coming in from our erstwhile AI portfolio, the acetals portfolio. And uh, post financial year 15, 16, as we ramped up all the capabilities that we achieved, from Clarient and we further augmented is where we have seen the kicking in on the specialities. And that's what is really driving the EBITDA and also as you can see the ROSI on that element. So yes, in the acetals or the essential space, there is a closer link up. And that's also what we shared, if you refer to that triangle on pricing and product, 
while on the speciality space, the linkage per se to raw material. So, for example, we don't have any cost plus formulas per se that we will throw out in the specialities. Right? In the essential space, that's what we would sort of leverage into. I would say if you want to make it black and white, obviously there's a gray area, but broadly. So that's what I would answer that question with. Uh, uh, second bit, uh, uh, you know, on the <clears throat> sorry, on the chlorination papers that you mentioned, the revised was worth at around five and a half billion INR. Uh, and obviously there is a significant sort of you know cost overrun, time delays, etc. There. Uh, if I look at our numbers, the aggregate gross work for last year is ten billion, on which you know uh, we had made a, we had generated a decent ROC. Uh, but given the cost overrun, uh, your medium term source in terms of maintaining the 20% ROC on a, at the company level, uh, does it imply that incremental business that we are doing in flooring mission uh, will be much much margin lucrative to compensate for the uh, for the uh, the capex overrun? So first, let me uh, you know restate our elements, and then I'll have Tanushree also jump in. So what we said was in this first phase of bringing all the Mittany assets into India and establishing, as you have correctly pointed out, there has been a CapEx escalation, and as we st stated, 550 crores is, we know, is the final number. And the peak revenues that we can envisage from the Mittany asset base is 210 crores. And that's why I also put in the timelines this year, commissioning and sampling, Second, next year is ramp up and our aspiration and ambition remains that the financial year 26, we are closer to achieving the peak revenues from the Mittany assets. So yes, CapEx has increased, but I think at this point of time from the Mittany assets, obviously we are not seeing more, I would say, opportunities. But that being said, and that's why I also alluded to in slide number 13, what we have been able to do is really sign a new opportunity with another MNC beyond the Mittany technology, which we are then able to do in our Lotte setup, and that is where I believe the value add is. And Lotte, as it stands today, we are investing in additional infrastructure and utilities, keeping in mind future expansions and investments, since 50% of the land is available. And these next blocks of investments that we do is where for lack of a better word, I like, always like to say where the music is with regard to the profitability. Yes, uh, that's helpful. And uh, last, if I may, since uh, uh, you mentioned that, you know, on a sequential basis, probably uh, Q2 looks like slightly soft because of the global macro challenges. Uh, just uh, focusing on the specialty vertical here. Uh, so from a market share gain perspective, especially in the, in the SI business, how do things look now, uh, not only from a ramp up in the two new projects that we have capitalized, but also on the existing ones? So, um, hi, Ankur, Harsh here. So, Ankur, yeah. broadly, the market share of our specialty does not change. We are seeing uh, headwinds where the supply chains of various customers have sort of shifted. As the chairman was referring to, it's more just in time as opposed to just in case. So you had uh, almost all of that fat in the supply chain coming off, but end market demand still remains there. So it's more about that. Our market shares are not really impacted. Uh, sure. Uh, and Harsh, if I may just you know, follow up on that, uh, the, the, the leaning of the supply chain or like the inventory in the system, uh, do you expect this to come back to normal, maybe once macro stabilized, or probably this is a, is a new world that we live in? Right, so maybe let me throw some color on this because this is really from the customer's mouth. You know, we were talking to one of our key customers who is engaged in the agro space. Beyond the just-in-case and just-in-time, what, what he, he or she was also alluding is agro by, uh, per se saw, and I would say, a significant double-digit growth, which if you compare with a normalized growth, which is in the range of 3 to 4%, was an outlier. So the feedback the customer provided us is obviously this outlandish or outlier growth are moderating, and it would normalize to the normal growth pattern. So I think uh, the, the positive element in that is 
the growth still persists, but it will not be from the outlier growth that we have experienced in the COVID and uh, just immediate COVID years. Okay, uh, that's all to you, Dr. Rajan. I'll get back into you and uh, thanks for your answers. Thank you for the questions. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Nitesh Thut from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead with your question, sir. Uh, hi, team. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is on the uh, on the diabetes in business. Uh, where as we gather uh, the new diabetes plant of uh, one of your dom uh, domestic competitors uh, has ramped up quite well. Uh, so have we seen any impact on our business, uh, however small it might be, on uh, you know in terms of the market share? So I, let, let me again try and give some color to it because this is what I tried to gleam out, you know, regarding our business first. When we acquired Clarion's Diketin chemistry, that came with a portfolio of about eight products. Today, as we stand, we have 50 plus products that we are leveraging of that chemistry. So while I don't think I'm privy to talk about competitors, but I think I can proudly share our strength and our right to win and that is what is giving us the confidence to also further expand at the edge with these chemistries. Okay. Uh, my second question is on the chemicals uh, business. So if I heard you correctly, uh, you said a top line of 210 crores uh, on your 550 crores investment, uh, which is less than 0.4x uh, a sector earnings. And which could imply much lower, uh, you know, return ratios versus your peers in the fluorination space. Uh, so your thoughts on the same? So let me start, and then I will have Tanisha or her step in. So first and foremost, the 550 is the number that we are grappling with. When we started off on this journey, we did not envisage the 550. Obviously, we are openly acknowledging there were certain curveballs which were in our sphere of control and outside, like COVID restrictions, like the rise in uh, freight costs, and the additional capex we are bringing to bring the entire site to a very strong EHS standard. Because one needs to bear in mind, fluorine comes with a certain premium of how you run your site in a safe and reliable manner. So yes, the 550 versus a 210 looks skewed, but that's where it is. But that, the, as I said, the story does not end there. For us, we are seeing this as an important nucleus that we can further expand on. And beyond just the talk, the conversations and the conversions we have had, as I shared openly with two of these customers, is giving us a great deal of confidence that our wave two, wave three of CapExes, that, will, that we will make in the age. In Lote, is will be significantly more value accreditive. Mm -hmm. And as I've shared, the run rate that we are aspiring for with our ambition in the specialties is in the range of one to two to the capex that we employ. Nitesh, and Tanishri wants to add, yes. Yeah. Nitesh, I think if you look at it from a point in time, yes, you are right, that the asset turns look, uh, look subdued and the returns look subdued. But I think I will request you to take a look at this from the perspective of two, two perspectives, right? A, this is, like uh, Rajan also mentioned, it includes uh, infrastructure and utilities from a uh, future-looking point of view. So what will be the business with and without this investment? And given that, you know, we've already given you a row of about 20% is what we target, that should actually tell you that the future plans for this will mean that, you know, this business starts to deliver what it's expected to deliver. The second is, if you look at our own history, and you know that's there on the slide that is there as well, the roses were subdued, uh, the EBITDAs were subdued even in the initial phases of our diketine business coming in together. And as time has passed, you've seen how the benefits have come about, right? We are, we are seeing an 18% growth in contribution margins of specialities. Uh, just year on year when we've had two, two more backward integrations. So I think we've got to keep a journey in mind and not look at it from a point in time perspective. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, just uh, you know just uh, as a follow up on this, uh, you know, can I have the cash capex outlay for twenty four FR twenty four twenty five and maybe twenty six if you already have that uh, laid out? So Nitesh, couple of things, right? We've said seven hundred and ten crores in the hedge over a period of three years. We've told you that there is five hundred and fifty that we are looking at Lotte. Uh, there is no major capex that is planned in this financial year for our current unit one and unit two because we did uh, two strong uh, uh, capitalizations just last year. So I think that gives you a fair picture of what we are doing in FY24, 25, and 26. Thank you. Lotte 550 crores of this a substantial part would have already been uh, done, as I understand, or, or, uh, uh, or am I wrong in my assessment? No, you're absolutely right that a substantial piece of it is already done. Okay, so uh, broadly, uh, can uh, you know, can we take an evenly spread out capex uh, cash outflow of uh, say, uh, you know, around 300 crores for the next uh, three years? I think from your modeling perspective, if you want to take uh, a uh, you know, 300 to 350 crores, that's fine. Uh, now, given that uh, you know the fluorochemical uh, investment hasn't uh, ramped up, you know there's a considerable delay, uh, you know in terms of uh, the ramp up there, and on top of it, uh, you know you're planning a 700 crores plus kind of an investment. Uh, any possibility of uh, you know any excesses on the balance sheet side? Uh, any what on the balance? Any stretch? Any stretch on the balance sheet side? We are point given the environment that we are in, especially. So we are point two x levered. Our cash flow from operations has been improving quarter on quarter, year on year. I think from a balance sheet stress point of view, we are actually in 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 a very very robust position, and this is also reflected in our credit rating of double A minus with a positive outlook. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Mr. Nitesh, may we request you to return to the question queue for follow-up questions as there are several participants waiting for their turn. Thank you very much. Our next question is from the line of Chintan Patel from Abans Investment Managers. Before you go ahead with your question, ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Please go ahead, Mr. Patel. Hello. There has been a lower pricing as well as some bit of uh, China dumping. Uh, Mr. Patel, sorry to Hello. interrupt. May we request you to use your handset, please? Yeah. So there has been a lower pricing as well as a some of, some bit of China dumping impacting the global demand. So what is your our ex action plan to mitigate this risk? Uh, we historically uh, uh, the ex uh, doing the export almost 30 40 percent of the total revenue. So how do you see the growth in the export market? And uh, recently you an you announced the capex of 700 crore. Already we have we spend around 550 crore on Mitteni. So how will the capex get you the desired returns going forward in the current environment? So I hear three questions uh, in one, so that's very smartly played. So uh, I think uh, let, let's maybe not tackle all, but let, let's tackle the pressing topics on your mind. First is really looking at the China element of where we are seeing what, what I could glean from your question, how is the China uh, surplus potentially impacting us? So the first is really we are very clear with our right to win. Tanushri in her narrative for a Q1 performance shared with you our volume growth, right? So that already I believe should give you confidence that we are gaining market share in our essentials vertical domestically. We are also gaining market. We have also shown market growth in our specialty verticals. So that for me and I hope gives you also comfort that we have a right to win and we know how to win. Right. So that's the first part of your question. The second one, I think, was about the capex outlay, and I think Tanushri just answered the same uh, to the other colleague who had asked the question about the capex outlay. I have laid out our clear ambition for the speciality that how the ROSI that we want to achieve the turns, asset turns, and also the EBITDA percentages that we want to achieve. 
So I hope that is also an answer. Uh, we do not force numbers out lightly. So we have our homework done. And on the CapEx outlay, I think Tanushree already alluded to it. What was your third question that you so smartly positioned, if you might, if you can just remind me? So what do you, how do you see the export market and what is the growth potential in an export market? Right. So as you said, if you saw the presentation in the SRM, the market opportunity for us in the specialties is upward of 3.5 billion and in the essential space up to 10 billion. That's one. That's the opportunity out there in our verticals. That being said, at this point of time, we are seeing softness in demand in Europe, which we cannot certainly run away from. And that's why also if you see the slide that we have provided, we do see certain exports, especially on our essentials vertical, where we are actually consciously stepping back from the exports, while on the specialities, we continue to be on a decent drop. A payback period on a diet facility. So, so pay, payback again. I think, uh, we, as I said, this is what we have shared with you is a five-year plan, and mm -hmm. we anticipate to have a ROCI of 20% across the essentials and specialties at an enterprise level. So I know. I hope that gives you a great confidence in that we know what we're doing here. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Mr. Chintan, may we request you to return to the question queue for follow-up questions. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of C.A. Garvid Goyal from Invest Analytics. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, good, good evening, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are. Uh, so you talked about uh, China dumping of the access capacity, like the last participant touched upon that. So uh, can you give some color how the things are shaping up from here now and uh, how the things are looking to you uh, in, 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 uh, in respect of the global markets as well as in India, like China dumping in the market, the prices of the chemicals are uh, falling. So how do you look at it from the sector point of view? I think one is, uh, you know, the chairman really kept it in perspective, right? Uh, the overall scenario on the chemicals with all the destocking that is happening, there is certainly the weakness in the overall space. That is point number one. The point number two, I think I hope we all understand that when we talk about India chemical demand, we are just about one-tenth of China. And China today, as we speak, is somewhere between 40 to 45 percent of the global chemical market. So one cannot not think about what happens in China. So all the questions coming that way are pertinent. The important thing is, what are we doing as Lakshmi? And for me, the biggest testament is that you are also able to play the volume deliver. And that is what we have been able to share with you that in quarter one and also last year, we have grown our volume share. We have done capexes, we have leveraged on that capexes, and that is what I believe that we will focus on is what is our right to win with a stronger customer proximity and also taking conscious call, like I just shared with the other colleague, that we have taken a slightly nuanced position for our exports to Europe in essentials, because we felt there was no point in losing money in that context. I hope this I am able to give you a little more on that color. So that thing uh, I understand means the Lakshmi is obviously uh, doing good. But the thing is, uh, we, we are uh, continuously, we are continuously talking about China plus one from the sector point of view. But now the things are uh, looking quite different, like China dumping up the access capacity. So where is that China plus one advantage uh, and from where that advantage will come to us? So that's, that's what I was targeting. Oh, okay, I understand. I think the advantage simply comes from a customer perspective in a very simplistic level, right? And I, as I, I come from a company which is globally steered and when I speak to our customers and specifically I also gave you very tangible examples that we have actually pinned up customers both for our Lotte and also the H projects that already gives me a great deal of confidence that customers A are cognizant about they need to switch but at the same point of time we have to be competitive. Nobody is going to pay you a huge premium let's be very clear but they are willing to play I would say strategic premiums. And that is what we are seeing, and that is what I believe as India we should leverage. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Mr. Goyal, may we request you to return to the question queue for follow-up questions. Thank you. 
Our next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from DAM Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, thanks for taking the question, sir. On uh, on the FI business, uh, you know, if, if you would like to uh, probably give your thoughts on, uh, you know, from a com comparative intense comparative dynamics perspective, how is uh, Lakshmi's positioning versus the more established peers? Uh, what is going to be our USP, uh, you know, over the next three to five years in the space? Sure. So, so Nitin, uh, you know, Lakshmi's positioning versus peers. Let's start from where and why we did Mitenni. A uh, lot of customers came to us who we were doing various contract manufacturing projects for and requested for the fluorine molecule to be part of several new products. And rather than have us invent the wheel and build out a specialty chemical fluorinated business, we said let's go in for a joint venture acquisition, which is how Mitenni came into the fray. Several of our peers had started the journey with refrigerant gases and progressed to specialty chemicals in fluorine. Uh, Mitenni started has started with specialty chemicals exclusively, and several of the technologies that Mitenni has are not currently present with our peer set. So there is a differentiated technology approach, and fluorination remains one of the steps in several what we are trying to do in our FI, in our erstwhile FI segment. An example of that is for example, electrochemical fluorination, which is completely new and unique to India. But secondly, I don't think India is competing within itself. The overall target market of fluorinated chemicals is very large and there's adequate opportunity for all of us to take. So that is really the strategy which we are going for. How can we be a partner to several global players and not really playing within our, and impacting ourselves? Thanks, sir. It's very useful. Thank you. Dan. Thank you. Thank you. That was the last question of our question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Ravi Goenka for closing comments. Uh, thank you, everybody. I do hope this session has been informative, transparent, and uh, very accurate to all of you. Please do feel free to get in touch with us for any uh, other clarifications that you may need. And I am very confident uh, that I have never been more confident than today of our company's preparedness, not only to handle the headwinds, today, but also to pivot to our new orbit and our new trajectory.